Newton's second law, F equals ma, it's so deceptively simple. It's the central idea of dynamics. It's the equation which we use to explain and understand motion of anything. F equals ma, what is it teaching us? It says that when you push on an object, you get an acceleration. You change the velocity. It's contrary to a lot of intuition. Think back to the example of Voyager, a spacecraft going through space, deep space, at incredible speeds, 30,000 miles an hour or something. Um, very fast motion. And what does Newton's second law say about that? You know, you, you think, what is keeping that thing going? Its engines are long dead. And Newton's second law says, nothing. You don't have to ask the question, why does something continue in motion? Newton's second law says the real question to ask is just what makes things change in their motion? In the case of that spacecraft, even though the velocity is huge, remember, acceleration is dv dt. It's the change in velocity. So something that's moving fast doesn't necessarily have an acceleration. And in fact, the Voyager spacecraft has zero acceleration. There are no forces pushing or pulling on it, and it just continues going through space. Your intuition about this equation gets messed up because of hidden forces. So instead of thinking about Voyager, you think about yourself driving a car. And you say, I need a force to just maintain my speed. I have to push on the gas pedal if I don't want to slow down. So you think, Newton's second law is wrong. You need a force to cause motion. And that's incorrect, because you're unaware physically of the frictional forces. So this leads us to a really important idea. In fact, Newton's second law, as I have written it, F equals ma, isn't quite right. What you really want to write is the following. F net, or F total, is equal to ma. In your car, there's two forces. The forward force that's pushing it, and the backward force, the friction that's slowing it down. If you're moving along the highway with a constant speed in a constant direction, that means your acceleration is zero, no matter what your speed may happen to be. The net force will be zero. That's what Newton's law teaches us. It's a vector equation. And sometimes figuring out the net force or the total force is diff difficult. People will often write Newton's law like this. Sum of the forces is equal to ma. And this sigma symbol just means add them all up. And they're vectors. So add them up as vectors. Let's just do an example here. Supposing you're playing hockey. So we're looking down at the hockey rink. And here's the homebrew puck. And uh, people are pushing on it. There's two people. And one of them is pushing up, force of person number one. Let's suppose we're not really playing yet. And they're just barely pushing. It's one Newton. That's a tiny force. Remember, one Newton is just a little touch. And somebody else is just touching this puck. And F2 is also got a magnitude of one Newton. You know, I'm being a little sloppy here. This is an arrow. An arrow has a direction. So let me include in the description of my force the direction. So I have to pick a coordinate system, right? x to the right, y up the page. And that means that right is i hat. So this is i hat. And up the page is j hat. So that's a proper way of writing force vectors. What's the puck going to do? Newton's law tells us the answer. First of all, Newton's law, Newton's second law, involves the mass. So I suppose I better tell you that. And let's suppose it's a 100 gram puck, 0.1 kilograms. You look at Newton's law, F equals ma. If you don't understand that that's really F net, you wonder, should I use F1? Should I use F2? And the answer is, use the net force, the sum of forces. So you've got to add this arrow to that arrow first to figure out the net force. And then we can figure out what's the puck going to do, what's its acceleration going to be. How do you add arrows? Remember, there's two ways, a graphical way and a kind of a mathematical or component way. Let's do it both ways just for fun. So first, let me just look at the picture and let me add these two arrows the graphical way. So I have a right arrow. Remember, you can slide arrows wherever you want on the page. It's got magnitude 1 Newton. This one has magnitude 1 Newton. And what's the result? When you add these two vectors, they're already tip to tail. There it is, F net. 
And by the Pythagorean theorem, since I picked them at right angles, it's just the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. It's about 1.4 newtons in the up right direction. So what's the acceleration going to be? Acceleration is F over M. The magnitude of the acceleration is the magnitude of the net force divided by the mass. In this case, the magnitude of the net force was 1.4 newtons. Remember, what is a newton? It's a kilogram meter per second squared. And notice also that the symbol M for meter is the same symbol as the symbol M for mass. Just keep them straight. There's only a finite number of letters in the alphabet to use in physics. I want to divide by the mass, which was 0.1 kilograms, and I get 14 meters per second squared. Big acceleration, kind of surprisingly big. Acceleration of gravity is 9.8, so this thing is really starting to move. It's accelerating. It's going faster and faster. 14 meters per second squared is the acceleration. That's because the mass was very small, even though the forces weren't so big. Um, Let's do the same problem using components just to see if we get the same answer. So I need to figure out F net using components, and that means I should write F net. It's F1, which was 1 Newton j hat, plus F2, which is 1 Newton i hat. I usually write these terms in the other order, 1 i hat plus 1 j hat. And now, that's the formula for F net written in component notation. And what is the acceleration? The acceleration vector is just this vector divided by mass. So you divide this by mass. Let me put it in the proper order. 1 newton divided by 0.1 kilograms is 10 meters per second squared i hat. And this divided by mass is 10 meters per second squared j hat. And that's the answer. And it's in complete agreement with what we had before. It's a vector that points right and up. It's tipped at an angle. And the magnitude of this is the square root of 10 squared plus 10 squared is 14 meters per second squared.